Okay, this should be the final uh, video on URL Manager. And I've said this over and over again, but I want to really emphasize this. URL Management is not just about loading a component and setting it up. It's about how you want your URLs to look and where that you want them to go. So just to go over that again a little bit, remember here, now we're in our default uh, URL right here. URL Manager is not turned on. And of course you would expect that in this directory there's an index and that index direct takes us to this page right here and that's all set up. Now if I go to here by clicking on home a URL is created and this question mark says that this is a get and it, the parameter I'm passing to index.php is R with the value site and index and site is the controller index is the action in the controller. That is the general setup. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to enable URL Manager. And because it's pretty common to do, it's just a matter of uncommenting in the main config. So now when I click on Home, it just does index.php forward slash site forward slash index. It's going to the exact same place, which is index.php with the, um, the get parameters of site and index. But this is how it will look. Now later on, and I've done it before, we'll eliminate this index.php and just go site index. And we want simple URLs. Now having said that, we also said that another way to affect your URLs is by having a module. A module is different from a model. A module here we have set up is administration. So if I go to administration here, it takes me to the default index, which doesn't need to be there. But really I'm looking for the controller under administration, which in our case is users, and it takes us to this location right here. Now again, these are parameters that are sent, and this is just the URL reference to those parameters, but this is nice and clean. And for purposes of today, I'm going to say what would happen if I tried to access the user's controller directly from the ecom site, and it says it can't find that. So now we're going to go back and we're going to set up the URL manager. These right here are the default rules. Okay, I'm going to set up a, a special rule here and this rule is the class rule. Now this class rule just says that I'm going to have a component. Look over here in my components and you see product URL rule.php. I'm going to have a component that is going to um, define whether the rule is matched or not. And my connection for this class, the connection ID is DB. Even though DB, DB database is defined afterwards or loaded afterwards among the components, I can go ahead and set that right here. I'm going to comment out these controllers right here and just focus on this one right here, this rule. What this rule does is it says that go through all of my previous rules and the first one that matches, and I'm looking for a pattern match in order to decide whether I'm going to take that rule or not. And it says go through all of them and when you get here go into this class. So let's look at this class. This class returns two functions. One is it's going to parse the URL and the other one it's going to create the URL. Remember when I clicked on home here, when I clicked on home it creates a URL. This is the URL it creates and it creates it using the URL manager. And since we want our URLs to be created at the, at the menus and everything like that, we have to have both of these functions, which is create the URL, pass some parameters and give me the right URL, and we also have to have parse the URL, which the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out whether this path that was passed to it is a match. If it's not, it just returns false and then it's, it's as if the rule didn't find a match. Okay, now this is a regular expression. This says take this regular expression and try to match it on this path info here. Now I am not an expert on regex. It confuses the heck out of me and you know fortunately there's some good tools out there that we can use to really determine what regex does. The first thing that I like is this shortcut of regex expressions here. This is under regexlib.com cheat sheet. Okay, so I like this to kind of give me an idea of what regex experience um, expressions do, more or less. But this is the real great one. It's regextester.com. It's great for a couple of reasons. One is that it will give me the PHP and it uses the same here, which is, is this pregmatch PHP function. 
Okay. So what am I going to try to do here? Now, I don't have products, but I would love it if um, it said products, Nikon, D300. But I do have some users. Okay, so let's go back to our users here. I've got two users here, and they're in the database. And what I'm saying is, just to mimic what a product would do, what I want to pass to it is I want to pass the display name and then the login name. And you can see there's the display name, Kurt, and the login name is Kurt Clement. If I do that currently, I say, hey, it says, I can't find where that is. What are you trying to, to do? So, so what I do is I say, okay, here's my source text, users forward slash Kurt Clement dot Kurt dash Kurt Clement. Now, I, I did make a mistake there. And what I want is not this, but I want this. Now, remember, users does not find a path because there is no controller that does that. Okay, so that's not found right now. So I want to be able to say users slash Kurt slash Kurt Clement, and I want it to come up with, I want it to return this, okay? Actually, what I really want it to turn is this, which is the Kurt Clement user, okay? So I'm targeting, I'm sorry, I'm targeting this right here, and what I want to return, keep flipping over there, is this, uh, this right here. So I go into my regex here, and I'm gonna say, what is the pattern? Well, what is the pattern that they gave me here? I'm not even sure what this pattern is here, but let's go ahead and copy and paste that and then submit it. And it says no matches. So if I had that as my regex expression, if I have that as my regex expression, this is going to return false. Okay, well, what exactly do I want? And and what I do is I get in here and I and I test. And I say, well, really, I want it. I, I, I know that this is the start, and I want it to say users. So that's that's what I'm looking for here. In fact, I want it to say users. If I look at my source text, I want everyone to say users forward slash. What does that do? It doesn't match either. Okay, well, what if I just do users? Doesn't match. Okay, and so what I'm looking for here is trying to find out what will match my source text here, users forward slash Kurt Clement. After much experimentation and cheating and looking at the cheat sheet, I found out that, oh, I gotta group these into different things. So I've got users as my first group with an escape to give me the forward slash. My second group is going to be, again, the escape. Any word is gonna be my second group. And then my third group is gonna be the escape on this forward slash. And then finally, I'm going to have any word in my fourth group. Let's see what happens when I do that. And that took me a while to figure out what I was going to do. Okay, so I finally found out that what I needed here was a users in my first group. So users, and then forward slash, my second group. And then any word, and then any word. Oh, and forward slash, any word. Okay, so now when I hit submit, ah, okay, I've got a match. Now when you do a preg match, what it's saying is match this and put the matches into this array right here. And fortunately with this tool, I could actually see what goes into the arrays. So what goes into array uh, zero is the full route. And what goes into array one is users, array two is Kurt, array three is that forward slash, and array four is Kurt Clement. So here in array two is my display name, and array four here is my username. Well, what am I gonna do with that? First of all, I'm going to replace this regex right here, which I'm not sure what they were trying to do here, but did not work for me. And I had to experiment around to get the right one. Okay, so this is what I want. Okay, so I've got my, uh, I've got my um, command here, and I need to decide, well, I wanted that to start with user or users. I'm going to say users. Okay, so I've got my command. So if I have a match, what do I want it to do? Well, well, the first thing I want to do is I want to go into my database and find the attributes in the user model. First, I want the display name to match two. Remember, I did this over here, and I said this, oh, two is Kurt, the display name. Great. And I want username to match four. Let's go over here, four, Kurt Clement. Yes, that's right. Okay, so I'm saying go into my user's model and find the record where the display name equals Kurt and the username equals 
uh, Kurt Clement. And if this record is null, then return null and then matches. I don't know why I did that, but I should just return false. Okay, and then I'm going to add this else statement. So I've said I found the record. Now this is very critical here, is that it's possible that you could find more than one record, so these need to be set up in the database to be unique, and it is unique, on username is unique on mine. And what I want to do is I want to get that ID from that record, and then return, put it into the get array, and then return administration users view. Remember, this is what I'm looking for here, passing the ID of two and this. So I do all of that, and then I should be able to go users, and it was users, right? Kurt, display name, Kurt Clement, and it, oh, forgot, I've got to put it, I got to put a quote around the IDs. Don't forget to do that. Refresh. And it takes me right here. Well, what if the display name is Kim and the username is Kim Clement? And it takes me to that user right there. Now you see the power of this is that I'm going to have products Nikon D300. Okay, what a great URL. And it's going into this um, model here. I had it actually go into the administration model in this case, module. And I had it do a database lookup, pass the correct information from the database, and get me this view right here. So now that is the complete use of the URL manager. I hope that you found this useful. Um, I would sit down and dis design your URLs what they should look like. This makes applica um, has applications for your database. What is going to be unique? I don't want to search on these terms right here and come up with more than one result. For example, if I had a Nikon and I searched on Nikon and I had a lot of results and I had a Nikon D300, what if I had a D300 and a D300-X or whatever? So you've got to think that through. What is going to be your unique values? Now I can, I can go back to here and also do the regex expression matching on other things to try to get them to go the way I want. This controller here is not a keyword. It's just a variable that is kind of indicative of what we expect it to be. This could be C and it would work the same. And what this says here is this variable C, any word, that's going to be my controller, if it has an ID or a number, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass that, whatever that word is, any controller, I'm going to pass it the view, and I'm going to set this ID as a get parameter. That's what all of this says. Again, this controller could be a A, it could be a B, it could be a C, as long as this matches over here, that same variable. And again, another way to look back at this is that it goes backwards and forwards. If I, if I want to do this, I expect this to be my URL. I am not going to go through the create URL. It is the exact opposite and I think pretty straightforward on what I'm going to do here. This is the hard one and this is the key one and the tools of the regex tester and the regex lib, those are critical for that kind of testing to see what you need to do. Anyways, hopefully this will be the last thing I speak on URL manager and we'll move on to some uh, more interesting things.